time has come. For 300 years, we prepared, we grew stronger. While you rested in your cradle of power. I kind of want to take things back to Fast and Furious number nine, which I can't believe there's 10 of these movies. Like I said before, I say that because you have to include that Hobbs and Shaw movie, which absolutely is a spinoff to the Fast and the Furious movies, which means there's 10 of these things. How is that even possible? What kind of world do we live in? I stopped watching them after the third one, uh, but they keep going. They keep going. Apparently people like them. So maybe I'm just a part of the minority on this one. However, you cannot deny that there's been some pretty spicy drama surrounding this movie, particularly over in China. Just to give you kind of a recap to what happened. Basically, something happened with John Cena. He was in an interview and he he daringly said that Taiwan is its own country, which it is. But because China claims that they own Taiwan, uh, this was very offensive to the people. So he put out a whole long Twitter apology, all in Mandarin. It sounds like it was written by the propaganda department for the CCP, which tells me Hollywood must have somebody that's familiar with things they like or something working for them. And it was fashioned beautifully even though it was pathetic. It showed John Cena has no spine. He for sure could have said no, but it is what it is. So he came out, he apologized, and it wasn't good enough. And the revenue dropped 85% in China, 52% elsewhere. Perhaps finally the legs are coming off of this series. Now, I don't want to focus too much on this. What I find kind of hilarious is that apparently Disney executives are freaking out about this because of course they are. They have so much interest over there in China. They have a whole theme park. I don't know if you knew this, but there's actually a magic kingdom in China that China owns. Now Disney gets a small controlling interest in there. They're the way they do Business with companies is very different. Uh, China has a huge stake in everything there. Uh, It is still a communist nation, but you're allowed to have some interest or something in it. I'm probably not the best channel for, for explaining this, but it is pretty interesting. I would say, look it up, but Disney is very, 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 very tied to them. That's, that's been no secret. We've seen all of the stuff that's come out from them. Uh, particularly the drama surrounding Mulan is pretty interesting. And for sure, the hu- the crimes against humanity that are going on in China, particularly around where Mulan was filmed over in China, uh, is pretty damning. But it all gets ignored because we all love, we all love the CCP apparently over here in the West as Hollywood And to a large extent, a lot of people in the government have bent the knee to the country time and time again. So apparently Disney execs are watching this and a little concern. This comes from WDW Pro, who's usually pretty good with uh, rumors and stuff. Usually a good account to check out. Very good insider over at Disney. Says here, editor's note, I'm sure that some of you are wondering what John Cena has to do with Disney and their relationship with China. Well, the recent outrage over Cena's apology and the seeming backlash impacting the F9 film is apparently causing stirrings and worry within Hollywood and studios like Disney. So here's what WDW Pro is hearing. F9's The Fast and the Furious John Cena received backlash after posting a recording that some felt seemed almost like a hostage video in which he begged for forgiveness from the Chinese people and the Chinese government calling for calling Taiwan a country. How dare he do that, by the way? I mean, referring to a country as a country? 
Prior to the pandemic, Hollywood has utterly thrill, was utterly thrilled with the idea of fully integrating their business with the Chinese market. The philosophical spin for the West was that American entertainment would act as an important force in Chinese culture in allowing Western entertainment corporations to target an exponentially increasing market that they could use to inflate their stockholder values. Now that way of thinking is revealing itself to have been fundamentally flawed, which is 100% true. We thought we could go over there and use them. No, they end up using us, and they've bought a lot of stake in Hollywood. In fact, I think like just even our theaters, AMC alone, AMC Theaters, which is all over <laughs> the trending the trending tabs today for stonk reasons, but uh, they have a large share in AMC. Uh, they have a large controlling interest in a lot of things Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood and entertainment is how you shape culture naturally. Uh, the way things have been working out is China's been able to come in and have a heavy hand in that. Uh, Western entertainment may have felt that they could create more freedom in China, but the opposite has been true. The government has instead used its connections to the worldwide free market to force Western corporations to follow their stipulations instead of the other way around. If there is something even remotely offensive to the Chinese government, Hollywood strips away the material or faces the refusal of entry for that film and future films the studio creates. And as far as revenue from China goes, the companies are finding that box office returns are not a sure thing, which is 100% true. It goes into a link for Milan 2020. Uh, these movies that try to pander for the country over there never really work out very well. Because like I've said before, China already has their own Hollywood. They don't need us to make movies for them. They want to watch stuff that, you know, it's kind of like a lot of the reasons, some of the cool things about like watching anime, for example, is you get to see another culture and that's what people want to see. You know, they don't want to see America's take on China. This is the problem that Shang-Chi is having when it comes to being released over there. So uh, let's go ahead and skip down to here. If the government isn't happy with Cena or the or with F9 citizens, will likely shy away. Now that the film is essentially done in China, the film is likely to limp into Western markets with Cena having been perceived negatively for his actions to save the film in Beijing. These executives focus on keeping anything China might not like out of their promotion stores or films, coupled with worry about celebrities making social media comments that could offend the large country is likely exhausting, not to mention that one wrong move could lead to a full-out revenue collapse in not only China, the Chinese market, but the Western markets as well. Nowhere is, is this situation felt more strongly than in the halls of the Walt Disney Company, where it could impact theme parks as well as film. Disney has come under fire for allegedly shrinking John Boyega's image on a Star Wars poster to appeal to Chinese audiences and thanking the CCP after they filmed near alleged camps for Milan. So, basically, this article just goes on to talk about how their Hollywood's basically... Mar uh, like, watching this situation and the reason that they're watching this so closely is because this film has been a disaster in China and it's been such a disaster in China that you know John Cena had to come out and apologize to China but that had tremendous backlash over here in North America now this movie is going to come out in theaters here I don't even think it's it's not in my local theater so the China got it for two weeks and now it's coming over here to the West and John Cena made a damn fool of himself bending the knee and licking China's boots, which has rubbed people the wrong way. And now how is this movie going to perform here? Are people going to turn their nose up to it? It's going to be an interesting, it's going to be an interesting thing to watch. Will people still go see this movie? I just checked. It comes out June 25th here in the West. So that's a little bit of time. People's attention spans are short when it comes to this kind of stuff, but it'll be easy to make people remember. So all eyes on fast nine, how will it perform? Will it be rejected by American audiences now? And you know, that goes further than the theater. Will people still pay to download it and watch it now? How is that going to work out? So 
you know, bending the knee to China might have been a very, very stupid idea. So anyway, I think that it, that's obvious. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think. Also, if you would please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, take a moment. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. Uh, there's something going on right now, and they've been unsubscribing people. So just take a second and double check on that and subscribe if you're new.